wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. God is not going to give the keys to heaven to people who live like hell on earth. It's my living in vain. It's my prayer in vain. None of it is in vain when you value time. And because he was nearing Jerusalem, he told them a story to correct the impression that the kingdom of God would begin right away. Important, because oftentimes you hear about Revelation, you're thinking it's tomorrow. And then you want to put everything down. But here is a point Jesus is making here. It says, he said a nobleman was called away to a distant empire to be crowned king and then return. Before he left, he called ten, excuse me, together ten of his servants and divided among them ten pounds of silver, saying, invest this for me while I am gone. But his people hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want him to be our king. After he was crowned king, he returned and called in the servants to whom he had given the money. He wanted to find out what their profits were. The first servant reported, Master, I invested your money and made ten times the original amount. Well done, the king exclaimed. You are a good servant. You have been faithful with a little. I entrust it to you, so you will be governor of ten cities as your reward. The next servant reported, Master, I invested your money and made five times the original amount. Well done, the king said. You will be governor over five cities. But the third servant brought back only the original amount of money and said, Master, I hid your money and kept it safe. I was afraid because you are a hard man to deal with, taking what isn't yours and harvesting crops that didn't, you didn't plant. You wicked servant, the king roared. Your own words condemn you. If you knew that I'm a hard man who takes what isn't mine and harvests crops I didn't plant, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. That's profit, right? I don't want to sound like Kamala Harris. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Then turning to the others standing nearby, the king ordered, take the money from the servant and give it to the one who has 10 pounds. Pay attention to the reply. Yes, it says, excuse me, the 25th verse. But master, they said, he already has 10 pounds. Does that sound familiar? He already has 10 pounds. Why would they say such a thing before I move on? It's because the mentality of most people is to take those who have been fruitful, who have put their labor to use, that made an increase, that made a lot, and they should take some of their money and give it to those who don't work. They said, again, he already has 10 pounds. What is the ideal in this culture today, especially in this nation? Give to those who don't labor. Give them a sense of social programs. Something that will just give them something to eat. In other words, keep them poor and you'll keep them enslaved. And when you have the mentality because someone has more than you and you despise that, you're saying to God and you're saying it about yourself that you are a person who do not believe in your own ability in which God planted in you to increase your own wealth and income. They said, 
he already has 10 pounds. The 26th verse. Yes, the king replied, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. Are you catching that? To those who use well what they have been given, even more will be given. But from those who do not or do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. And that's why the poor stays poor. Because the little they have, they lose it immediately. Because the first thing they do, they look to spend it. And as for these enemies of mine, he calls them enemies, who didn't want to do or didn't want me to be their king, bring them and execute them right here in front of me. Now that's a hard thing. But it should point out to the fact that Jesus uses this example about money for a reason. Although the financial aspect of this chapter illustrates stewardship, emphasizing the responsibility to manage and grow resources, money, which is a tangible and universal understood asset, serves as a powerful metaphor for talents and opportunity. And by using finances, Jesus underscores the practical measurable, measurable outcomes of wise management versus neglect. It all bounces back to your life. How you manage your money is how you manage your life. How you view money could somewhat mirror how you view God. God said you cannot serve both him, God, and money, mamma. You can't serve both God and money. So he says, he's not saying Satan. He says you can't serve me and money because the closest thing to you is either God or money. Guaranteed, hands down. So this parable implies that individuals should actively invest in their skills, their time and resources serving to maximize their potential. So by doing so, you fulfill your purpose. You reflect God's glory and contribute positively to society. So effective stewardship is not just about personal gain, but about honoring God by using what he's given us and making a meaningful, impactful life that will bless others in the long run. Paul said, if, if a man lives only to himself, he is a man most miserable. This diligent, proactive approach to life exemplifies faithfulness and aligns with the biblical call to be fruitful and multiply the good that God has given us on the earth. When God created man, God said, let him be, not only have dominion, but let him be fruitful and multiply. Every single person in this room has been given life to multiply. Now, I've been thinking a lot about time lately and how to use the time that I have remaining only to realize how little time I have to accomplish what God sent me to this earth to do. I do not believe that I'm an accident. And I don't believe that you are either. I don't care how you got here. I don't care if your parents put you up for adoption. I don't care if your parents got together in the back of a 57 Studebaker. How you got here doesn't matter, but that you are here, it does. Because no single person on this planet, I don't care how evil they are or how good they are, are here without a purpose. Now I feel as if I lost a lot of time not caring about time. In many moments, I can never recapture that perhaps would have prepared me for a better future. But I wasted time. Nevertheless, I've learned this principle. The quickest way to lose time is to not think that time matters. 
Some of these things you need to write down. I'm, and I'm telling you, you're going to hear God speak to your heart. And if it rubs you the wrong way, just say, ouch. But the Spirit of God, who's a comforter, he'll help you. Because you got to get better at your life before you leave. Are y'all listening to me? When you lose track of time, we find it difficult to track where time has gone. Have you ever said, where has all the time gone? It was just here and now it's gone. Time waits for not one single person. Not one. The book of James explains it and illustrates it so differently in, in the, uh, the Passion Translation as life being the vapor. It says it in James 4 and 14, but you don't have a clue to what tomorrow may bring. For your fleeting life is but a warm breath of air that is visible in the cold only for a moment and then vanishes. That's how life is. I started almost 66 years ago. I lost a lot of time in those 66 years. Don't look at me, you have to. Made a lot of stupid choices and mistakes that not only affected my life, it affected the lives of my children. It also affected other people's lives. I decided that I'm not going to live my life full of regrets anymore of what I could have been or what I could have had or could have done. There is nothing to regret with a job well done, guaranteed. So if you think that the price for success is too high, wait until you pay the bill for regret because it's going to be a heavy, heavy price. You either pay the price of discipline now or you live the life of regret forever. And that will refer to your wealth, your health, your marriage, your salvation. All of it matters right now, period. Every single moment. Honor the, the person you're with. Love the person you're with. It's not greener on the other side. Are y'all listening to me? Love the parents that you have. Every parent that you think would have been better for you is not always the case. I don't care if your mama was a crackhead or your daddy was a pimp. God gave you an experience not to change you, but to help transition you from one point to the next so that you do not have to live out the life that they lived. Are you all listening to me? Bad habits in one area of your life will eventually destroy our self-image or self-discipline in other areas while we're working on getting better. So consistency cannot be inconsistent. If you want to get better at anything, you can't allow consistency to be interrupted by inconsistency. For every discipline effort, there is multiple reward, and there is one of life, this is one of life's greatest arrangements that God has placed there. It's almost like the law of sowing and reaping. In fact, it is an extension of the biblical law. If you sow well, you reap well. So remember, the world is not only made out of matter. The world is made out of what matters to you. Remember that. There are many things that are intended for us, that God placed on this planet for us, positions that have been prepared for you. But our lack of preparedness and readiness disqualifies us for them. And it's not that God didn't give it to you. You weren't qualified to see it when it came. You cannot achieve a multi-million dollar business with a minimum wage habit. 
You all want to get further in life. You all want to have a better marriage. You all want to be more spiritual in loving God. There is a basis and a foundation for why and how you get there. Habits are resistant to change, always. It will fight you whenever you have to change. And this is why change must be forced on you. You got to force a change in your life. It's not going to happen easily. You are responsible for developing your habits. Then your habits will start to develop you. I'm going to let that soak in. You spend your time in the bottle and watch the bottle spin. You may be taking off more than you expected. Y'all remember spin the bottle? Okay, I'll just. <laughs> Some of you don't know anything about that. Thank God you don't. Develop the habits that are necessary Develop the habits so that when you're, when you're not earning at that time, you're learning. When you start learning more, you earn more. Yes, Look at your neighbor and say, when you learn more, you earn more. So as you break certain patterns in your life's behavior, because it's your behavior that puts you where you are, or you break those bad habits your world will simply start to emerge. In fact, new worlds will begin to open up. And some of you have been so well developed in a, with ability in particular areas of your expertise, but you have such a low self-esteem that you undervalue your time used to get better at what you do. Literally. The Bible says over in Romans, the 12th chapter, the third verse, I'm just going to read the latter part of it. It says, do not think of yourself, that do, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought. It, God never said to not think highly of yourself. It, it, it's, 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 it's a travesty for you to think low of yourself. It's not God-like to think high of yourself. One of the names for God is L.L. El Young. That means the high and lifted up God. God created you after his nature, after his similitude. He made you like him. He didn't make you to be the scum of the earth. He placed you on the earth and he says that the earth is the Lord's, is, is yours rather. It says that God has given the earth to the children of men, but heaven belongs to God. So everything down here God has given you and I. That means that God gave you your body. He gave you your brain. He gave you your mouth. He gave you everything about you. So you should think highly of yourself, not more highly of yourself. Meaning don't compare yourself to someone else because there is no one on this planet like you. It's unfair to compare yourself to someone else. Your fingerprints suggest that you are unique and different. God made you and I that way. Your fingerprints are the destiny of your life. It literally deals with your purpose. It, 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 it gives you an opportunity to work with your hands and produce an increase. That's why God gave you hands. And if you don't have natural hands, those hands, in the Hebrew, the word hands literally refers to mouth. Your mouth is the ability to create. So some of you have a million dollar business in you, but you ignore the fact that the person, the employer that offers you a high salary is simply trying to get you to forget your dream. Somebody say amen to that. How do you kill a man with a dream? Give him another one. Fear kills dreams, but pursuing dreams will kill the fear. My advice to you is don't spend your time. Sell it. Stop seeing yourself 
as someone working for and start seeing yourself as someone working with. My life is not measured or your life is not measured by the number of breaths you we, take, we take, but the moments that take our breath away. When I met my wife back in 19 Roman, it wasn't that I fell in love with her. I didn't have this romantic story like so many others. When I saw her, I melted. I didn't melt. In fact, when I saw her, I just said, she seems nice. She was a captain. I said, oh, she's making a little money. She was driving a brand new Aqua. And I said, oh, I can see myself in that. <laughs> she was a nurse in the military. And all I did was say, hey, let's go out for coffee. I had not done that with anyone in probably several years. All I did was, and I didn't drink coffee. But how we got together was not a matter of us just coming together for the sake of saying, hey, let's have a good time or fellowship, whatever. No, it was when we got together, I knew I wasn't in the business of dating or trying to find someone. I'm the hunter. And if I saw what I wanted and she saw what she would give into, we both just said yes. I don't know what it was. It was probably like a Adam and Eve. Adam saw Eve and said, that's bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Now, he may have saw something different than what I saw in my wife, but when I saw her and we fellowship and we started talking, her intelligence and the way that she spoke that literally just told me in my mental processes, I can get a lot from her. I can learn from her as much as she can learn from me. I think if you're the smartest person in the room, you're insecure. Are y'all listening to me? There's always something you don't know. But the unfortunate thing, many of us act like we know everything. You ever met a person that knows everything about nothing? And they can tell you when you say, oh, I'm going to do this. And they, they're just, oh, don't do that. Oh, yeah, I, I did that. No, let me tell you something. Listen to someone who really not just have the experience, but they have the product to prove it. Don't wait for the perfect moment. Take the moment and make it perfect. Write that down. I'm letting it soak. All right? Your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. Remember that. The first thing we did when we came to Jesus is that he made us born again. He changed us. I have said it so many times. God is not going to give the keys to heaven to people who live like hell on earth. It doesn't work that way. You got to take advantage of moments that God has given you, which is right now. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. That means value what you're getting. Don't be like these other clowns who go to church and they're getting nothing. And they come out super spiritual. And they're the most defeated people that you can ever know. It's like someone telling you how to have an effective marriage, but they've been married seven times. The eighth person they married, they told them already, I won't keep you alone. And they want to advise you on how to keep your spouse. Oprah is not the best example of how to keep a man. Because she ain't got one. How do I know? Because the man she claims to be with won't put a ring on that finger. (laughs) 
if you respect and want to be with anybody, put a ring, ring on it. Put a ribbon around that package. Amen. And when you can pay for the one you're about to make or you want to be with, that's not the one you want to be with. So I'm sure she pays enough to keep him afloat. The Bible says, he who watches the wind, waiting for all conditions to be perfect, will not sow seed. And he who looks at the clouds will not reap a harvest. This means that waiting for the perfect conditions can lead to inaction and missed opportunities. It emphasizes the importance of taking initiative and making the most of the present circumstances rather than procrastinating as ideal conditions are rarely guaranteed. You got to believe that God has given you a position no matter what it looks like, greater is he who is in you than the devil that's in the world. Just in case no one informed you of this, someday is not a day of the week. But at least now is today. You can make all the difference in your own personal life and in the life of someone else who cares about you by making the right decisions today. How you live your life does eventually affect others. Just like no, no, no mother or father wants to see their sons or daughters on drugs or out prostituting. The best time to implement an ideal or to start a business was 20 years ago when you got the vision and you got the idea. The second time to do it is now. Pick up all the miss, missed out pieces and put them together and start something. Stop talking about, oh, this is what I'm going to do. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. You know one of the things that most people do if you've been in the military, once you get out, you have all of these hopes to do certain things. And you keep changing. It's like a, you tell your, your child when they, go, when they go to college, stop changing your, your, your major. The, longer, the more you change your major, the longer you stay in school. One of the things you got to tell some people, stop running from man to man, woman to woman, job to job, house to house. If you can't stay in an apartment for at least one year, what does it say about you? I said it before. Most churches today can only maintain people, certain people in their church for up to five years because people have running on their mind. They don't know how to stay with something until they make something happen or make something right. Dr. Nelson would tell us you need 40 years to stay in a church under a pastor who would feed you and feed generations so that the next generation coming after you will be blessed by the word that you got. Every time you avoid the process, you delay the progress. Neglecting your growth makes achievements slow. Extremely. The Bible says, so teach us out of, out of Psalms 90 and 12. I'm going to read this out of the New Living Translation. And this is Moses who wrote this. He says, teach us to, to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. So in other words, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now listen to me. To make it even more simpler, it literally means teach us how short our life is so that we may become wise. There is a reason wisdom is associated with time. Not always gray hair. A lot of folk have gray hair at 30 now. Hey, now that you heard that word, if you want to catch the full message of what I'm sharing that you may not have heard in this, 
I guarantee you, you want to go to joycenter.org. That's J-O-Y-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org, O-R-G. And tune in and watch the entire program because there's a lot more than what you just saw. So God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon.